What is an air-to-air -air missile, you might ask? Well, it's this stick strapped underneath your plane. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes with differing guidance systems, but are all generally used to shoot down your enemies. Your next question is probably, how do I use them? Well, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to go over every type of air-to-air -air missile in War Thunder and how you use them. Now before you use a weapon, it's a good idea to understand some basic information about it. For that, you need to look at the stack cards, so we'll start out by taking a look at a pair of stack cards to understand the important information found on them. Here we have the AIM-7E Sparrow and the R-24T. Starting from the top, we have the total mass of the weapon in kilograms. Next, we have the guidance type. Here we see the R24T uses IR guidance, while the AIM-7E uses SAR guidance. Aspect shows you what direction you can lock an enemy from with the missile, while Signal shows you what type of signal a semi-active radar homing or active radar homing missile uses to guide onto target. Currently, this is either Pulse or CW, which stands for Continuous Wave. Next, we have Lock Range, which tells you the maximum range the missile is able to lock onto a target. However, for active radar homing missiles, this will show you the maximum range its onboard radar can acquire a lock. It can still be launched at a target further away than this, but I'll go into more detail on that later. Getting back onto topic, next we have Launch Range. This is the maximum range a missile can travel under perfect conditions. This does not refer to the practical max range you can hit a target though. There are a lot of different factors that go into determining a missile's range, so the practical max range ends up being much shorter than its launch range. Maximum speed shows you the top speed a missile is able to reach. Maximum overload shows you how hard the missile can maneuver to hit a target. Maximum overload during launch shows you how hard you can be maneuvering when you're trying to fire the missile. If you exceed this limit, the missile will fail to launch and stay on the rail. Guidance time shows you how long the missile will track before self-destructing. And then finally, explosive type, mass, and TNT equivalent shows you what explosives is used for the warhead, how heavy that warhead is, and its explosive force compared to TNT. There's a lot more information that isn't shown on the stack cards, but thankfully, data miners have gathered this information and shared it with the community on a Google spreadsheet. I'll leave it linked in the description if you're interested in learning more about a certain missile's stats. Before moving on to the different missile types, I highly suggest setting keybinds for the fire secondary weapon, switch secondary weapons, and weapon lock air-to-air -air controls, as you will be using these for pretty much every missile type that we will be going over today. The first missile guidance type we will take a look at is MCLOS, or Manual Command Line of Sight. Currently, the AA-20 Nord and the RB-05A are the only MCLOS air-to-air -air missiles in the game. To guide this type of weapon, you will have to manually steer them using keyboard inputs. To do this, you will need to bind both the yaw and pitch axis for aimed weapons keybinds. I also suggest turning off the relative control setting and the control axis menu for each set of keybinds. This will make it so that after you release the button, the control surfaces will return to a neutral position on their own. Using this missile is pretty simple. All you have to do is aim the missile using your gun crosshair and then use the fire secondary weapon keybind to launch the missile. Then once it's launched, use the yaw and pitch axis for aimed weapons keybinds to make any adjustments needed for the missile to hit the target. There is a large skill curve with this missile when it comes to hitting moving targets, so it's best used against slow maneuvering targets like bombers and attackers. The next type of missile we will take a look at is SACLOS or Semi-Active Command Line of Sight. These are also known as beam riding missiles. Currently, the only SACLOS missile in-game is the Fireflash that can be found on the Swift F7 in the British Tech Tree. The missile works by having the launching aircraft create a beam with its radar that the missile will try to stay within. There are two ways to use this missile. The first is fairly simple, just line up the target using your gun crosshair and press the fire secondary weapon keybind to launch the missile. After launch, the missile will try to keep itself centered on top of your crosshair. To guide this missile, simply move your mouse around to keep the crosshair on or slightly in front of your target. One thing to be aware of when using this method is that the radar gun sight can lock onto the missile after launching, causing it to veer off in a random direction as it tries to guide itself onto itself. To prevent this, use the Lock Radar IRST on Target keybind to turn the radar gun sight off. Once this is turned off, the missile will fly nice and straight. 
The second way is a little more difficult to pull off. First, you need to lock onto the target using your Breedar gun sight. To do this, you will have to get within 2 miles of your target and place your crosshair near it. Then, you'll see the radar screen on the right go from acquiring to track and a dotted line will appear in the middle. Once you have the lock, press the fire secondary weapon keybind to launch the missile and then continue to maintain the lock and the missile will guide itself onto the target. The next guidance type we will take a look at is infrared or IR for short. These are often referred to as heat seekers. Early IR missiles used a passive seeker to detect and track IR radiation from the engine exhaust of an aircraft. To acquire a lock, you will generally need to see the target's engine, and for this reason, these early IR missiles are known as rear aspect missiles. More advanced missiles use an actively cooled seeker head to improve sensitivity. This allows the missile to lock onto the heat generated by the friction of the aircraft moving at high speeds through the air. This means you don't need to see the engine to be able to gain a lock, and for this reason, these are called all aspect missiles. Early rear aspect missiles primarily used a cage seeker. This means the IR seeker at the end of the missile is fixed facing directly forward prior to launch. Examples of cage seeker rear aspect missiles include the AIM-9B, PL-2, R-3S, and Shrafir-2 to name a few. To use this type of missile, we will first need to turn the missile on. To do this, you will use either the weapon lock air-to-air -air or fire secondary weapon keybinds. I personally suggest using the first of these keybinds as it will work every time while the latter will sometimes run into a hiccup and not turn on the missile. You will then see a circle begin to flash around your gun crosshair and after a few seconds the circle will begin to flash faster and you will hear a low pitched growl indicating the missile is ready to lock on. Then place your target's engine exhaust within the circle. The circle will then stop flashing and turn red alongside the tone changing to a high-pitched growl indicating the missile is locked on and ready to fire. Then all you have to do is press the fire secondary weapon keybind to launch the missile. The missile will then guide itself towards the target without any more input from you. If you wait too long to launch the missile, it will turn off on you, requiring you to turn it back on and wait for it to warm up before you can launch it again. This is a quirk of all IR missiles, so timing their activation is a very important skill to learn. Cage Seeker missiles are generally fairly short range and fairly easy to dodge since they don't pull very hard, so you will have to learn when it is best to use them to guarantee a kill. Later rear aspect missiles would gain the ability to uncage their Seeker head. This means once a missile is locked on, it is able to freely move around as long as the target is kept within its gimbal limits. In practice, this will allow you to lead the missile some before launch so that it doesn't have to pull as hard to lead the target on its own. There are many examples of uncaged rear aspect missiles in game, like the Mini AIM-9 variants, the Magic-1, the PL-5B, and the R-60 just to name a few. Using these missiles follows the same exact process as a cage seeker missile. Simply use the weapon lock air to air or fire secondary weapon keybind to turn on the missile and wait for it to warm up. You should now see one circle inside a larger circle. The smaller circle shows you where the seeker is pointed, while the larger circle indicates the gimbal limits of the seeker. Once warmed up, place the target within the smaller circle to get it to lock on. Once locked on, you can then lead the missile as long as you keep the smaller circle inside of the larger circle. Then use the fire secondary weapon keybind to launch the missile. One more thing to mention is that some of these missiles are capable of radar slaving. So if you have a radar lock on your target, the radar will tell the missile where to point its seeker to acquire a lock. This won't let you get a lock when the missile wouldn't otherwise be able to, and it won't help you guide the missile after it is launched. This will simply make it much easier to get the initial lock and allows you to begin leading the missile while it is still warming up. The ability to radar slave isn't shown on the stack card, but can be found on the missile spreadsheet that I have linked below. The final type of heat seeker we will take a look at is the all aspect uncaged missile. Examples of this type of missile include the R-60M, MK, the AIM-9L, and the Magic-2. These missiles work the exact same way as a regular uncaged seeker head missile, only you don't have to see the engine to be able to lock a target. With the actively cooled seeker, you are able to lock onto a target from head on. Following the same steps as before, use the weapon lock air-to-air -air or fire secondary weapon keybind to turn on the missile, wait for it to warm up, 
place the target within the smaller circle to get a lock, and then use the fire secondary weapon keybind to launch the missile. When locking someone from the front, it is easier for them to flare off the missile because the friction heat generated by flying at high speed is generally not as hot as in the afterburning engine, so just keep that in mind. The next type of guidance we will cover are semi-active radar homing, or SAR missiles. This missile works by having the launching aircraft acquire an STT lock, which stands for Single Target Track. The missile then picks up on radar waves that reflect off the target using a small radar receiving dish in the nose and homes in on those reflections. Examples of SAR missiles include the AIM-7 series, the R-530 series, and the R-23 and 24R. Knowing how to use the radar on your plane is very important when using SAR missiles. If you want to learn how to use the radar, you can check out my FOX-1 guide as I cover it there, but I will be doing a dedicated radar guide, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, as a few things in that FOX-1 guide are out of date and I want to go more in depth on radars than I did in that video. Coming back to missiles, you'll first need to find a target using the radar and then lock onto it using the Lock Radar IRST on Target keybind. Then use the Weapon Lock Air-to-Air -air or Fire Secondary Weapon keybinds to turn on the missile. Do note, you must have a radar lock before you are able to turn on the missile. There's almost no warm-up time for SAR missiles, so it'll come up right away. You will then see a small seeker head circle inside a larger gimbal limit circle, similar to the uncaged IR missiles. However, there is also a third circle around the seeker head circle. This circle indicates the strength of the lock. It'll grow clockwise the stronger the lock is. At around 50%, the circle will change color to red, indicating you have a strong enough lock for the missile to track the target. If you fire before this, the missile will not track. When you have a good enough lock, use the fire secondary weapon keybind to launch the missile. You then have to guide the missile all the way until it hits the target by maintaining the radar lock. This could take anywhere from a couple seconds all the way up to a minute, depending on the missile and the range at which you're launching from. The main advantages of SAR missiles is that you can fire them from all aspects, they typically have a longer range than their IR counterparts, and they are immune to flares. Their main downsides being that they aren't fire and forget like IR missiles, so you can only target one aircraft at a time, and if the lock is broken while the missile is in flight, it'll stop tracking and detonate itself. One more thing to note, while SAR missiles are immune to flares, chaff can be used to decoy them. Now chaff will affect SAR missiles differently based on the type of signal the missile uses to guide itself. Pulse type missiles are extremely prone to chaff, usually going after the first one it sees. However, CW type missiles are able to ignore chaff depending on the situation. So for example, if you are using a pulse track radar mode and someone deploys chaff before you have fired your missile, it'll go stupid and not track them. If they deploy chaff after you launch the missile, don't break the radar lock just yet, even if the radar is now locked onto the chaff. Most of the time, the missile will continue to track and hit the target. This is due to people not using chaff properly and not some bug. CW type missiles have their own Doppler filter and are able to distinguish a jet moving quickly towards them from relatively non-moving chaff. I suggest checking out Seekerhead's video on evading SAR missiles that I'll have linked in the description as he showed how to properly use chaff in it. If y'all want, I can do a video on this subject as well, but I feel there isn't much more for me to say that he didn't already cover. The final type of guidance we will cover is Active Radar Homing or R-type missiles. Like the name suggests, this type of missile has its own onboard radar that it uses to find and then guide itself onto a target. Though because the radar has to be small enough to fit inside of a missile, it'll have a shorter range than radars found on the launching aircraft. So when engaging targets at long range, it'll still need to be guided to the target until it is close enough to turn on its own radar and guide itself. This is referred to as lock-on after launch capability, and the moment the missile goes active is known as going pitbull. Now if the target is within the missile's radar range before launch, it is able to go active right off the rail and begin tracking on its own. This is known as lock-on before launch capability and is referred to as mad dog since the missile will go after the first thing it sees. 
Currently, the only active radar homing missile in game is the brand new AIM-54A Phoenix. There are two ways to use an active radar homing missile. The first is to use a multi-target track lock using the TWS radar mode. Now I'll go into more detail on this when I get around to making my radar tutorial, but for brevity's sake, this mode allows you to track multiple targets at the same time, enabling you to guide multiple missiles onto each target. It also won't alert the target's radar that it is being locked onto. However, the track resolution is weaker than an STT lock, so you're not able to guide semi-active radar homing missiles with this mode. Now to use an active radar homing missile with TWS, you will need to first find a target and then select it using the automatic select radar IRST target to lock or use the manual horizontal and vertical radar IRST target Q control access keybinds. Once the corners around the target extend to form a near complete box, you will now have a TWS lock that you can guide a missile with. Then use the weapon lock air to air or fire secondary weapon keybinds to turn on the missile. When the missile turns on, you will see the same weapon circle set up as SAR missiles. So once you have a solid lock, you can fire the missile using the fire secondary weapon keybind. Now you just have to keep the target within the radar search zone until it reaches its lock range, where its own radar will acquire the target and take over guiding itself. For the AIM-54A, this is 9.94 miles. As of making this video, there is no way of telling when the missile's radar has gone active, so you're just going to have to estimate how far the missile is from the target yourself. Now if you want to fire multiple missiles at multiple targets, it'll follow the same steps as above. First, acquire one target and launch a missile, then switch your lock to the next target and fire the second missile, and so on and so forth. As long as you keep all the targets within your radar search zone, the missiles will keep receiving their guidance information until they activate their own radars. The second way to use an active radar homing missile is with an STT lock. This is the same radar locking method used when guiding SAR missiles, so the same steps apply here. First you need to find a target using your radar and then lock it using the lock radar IRST on target keybind. Then use the weapon lock air to air or fire secondary weapon keybinds to turn on the missile. Once the missile powers on, you will see the same three circles as in the previous method. So make sure you have a solid lock and then use the fire secondary weapon keybind to launch the missile. Now you will have to maintain the lock until the missile reaches its lock on range and goes pit bull. Now the reason you might use an STT lock to launch an active radar homing missile over an MTT lock is that it'll give you more room to maneuver while maintaining the lock. TWS has a very narrow search area while an STT lock will take full advantage of the gimbal limits of your radar. You can also acquire an STT lock quicker as you can use ACM modes. However, the disadvantages are that you will alert your target's RWR, you can only guide one missile onto one target at a time, and you will lose some situational awareness as your radar will be fully occupied tracking that one target. With that, you should have all the knowledge you need to go out and use all the different types of air-to-air -air missiles in War Thunder. If anything changes, I'll be sure to update this video again in the future. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day.